All right, so today I'm going to give you an update on how I've been feeling about my whole switch to Canon from Nikon. And I'm also going to give you an update on what's currently in my gear bag. So for those of you who have been following along since uh, I started posting videos to YouTube, you know that I switched from having a bunch of Nikon gear like the D850 and the D750 and a bunch of their uh, professional series lenses and I totally just sold those and moved to the Canon mirrorless system. And for those of you that can relate, that's a pretty scary thing to do. It kind of just get rid of all of the gear that you are super comfortable with and, uh, and go to something new. But there were definitely some compelling reasons why I wanted to make the switch. Some of those reasons being the overall customer service from Nikon. Pretty much every experience that I had sending something in to Nikon was unpleasant and, uh, and it just seemed like there was a lot to be desired in the area of customer service for Nikon. And uh, another reason being that I wanted to get more into video. At the time, Nikon DSLRs were not a good choice for video because they used a contrast-based autofocus system when you were in the live view mode. I do know that they have the D780 now, which does have a phase detect autofocus system for video. I'm sure that the majority of consumers out there aren't really looking to purchase a DSLR anymore, but it is cool that they offered that for those individuals that are still more comfortable with the DSLR system. And now of course, Nikon has more reliable and professional series camera bodies for their Z system. So occasionally I kind of find myself interested in checking on what Nikon is offering because honestly I do think that Nikon offers really great products their cameras are awesome and one area that I wish that Canon would catch up on sooner than later with Nikon is in the area of uh, sensor technology and um, you know I think that Canon's going to get there soon especially with this new Canon R3 camera coming in the uh, near future but that is one thing that has been lacking a little bit with Canon. But overall, I'm like 99% sure that I won't ever go back to Nikon. I'm just that happy with Canon. And, uh, you know, there's not really much more that I'm seeking in terms of performance. I've definitely really become familiar with the Canon workflow and uh, how to work with the colors of the Canon and work with the raw files and C log. So even if I wanted to making a camera system switch right now, it just wouldn't make sense. I think I would also have a really hard time leaving behind the dual pixel autofocus on the Canon mirrorless cameras. It is a system that is pretty flawless and really, I, uh, you know, couldn't ask for much more. Maybe in lower light situations, that is something that Canon can work on in the future, but overall, um, it's really dependable. All right, so going along with this video, I wanna show you guys the gear that I currently have right now. Um, and this is the gear that I usually always bring with me, whether it's a video shoot or a photography session. So this is the stuff that I rely on and I'll kind of explain why I have certain items just so you guys can understand my workflow. All right, so this bag is the F-Stop Guru bag. This thing's nice because it is pretty compact and it really fits everything that I need in terms of my camera gear for any video projects or photography sessions. And in the back here, you have the back panel access to, you know, all of the photography gear right there. So I'll just go through everything one by one. But before I do that, I want to let you guys know that I'm currently shooting this video on my Canon EOS R5 on the RF 15 to 35 millimeter f 2.8 lens. So uh, that combination is a very functional and uh, one of my most used setups for video work. So the R5 and the 15 to 35. So if you guys are looking to get into video, that is a really solid combination right there. Um, the 15 to 35 is just a really useful video focal range, I think, you know, um, and that's 
of course that's subjective everybody sort of has their own style but i really really enjoy that focal range and uh, the 15 to 35 has the nano usm autofocus system which is really great for video too also for video i don't really like my image being super crisp and sharp it's most of these rf lenses will give you that really sharp image. So for a lot of my personal content, I'll place the Pro Mist filter onto the 15 to 35, just so I get a little bit more bloom in the highlights of the image. And overall, it just kind of decreases the contrast of the image and softens the skin a little bit. So uh, it's nice and uh, I really enjoy it, so if you have any questions about that, let me know. All right, so like I said, I'm shooting on the R5. As a backup, I still do have my Canon EOS R camera, and this camera's awesome. I do have a ton of videos on this camera, so I'll link some of those above if you are looking to acquire this. I will say that this camera is a good value camera, even in 2021. So currently I'm just working with three lenses and they're all RF lenses. It's a 15 to 35. For my normal focal range, I have the 50 millimeter 1.2. And for the longer end, I have the 85 millimeter 1.2. So I definitely put a lot of thought on whether I wanted to acquire zoom lenses first or just kind of stick with primes. And in the past, I always really enjoyed shooting with primes a lot more than zoom lenses. And, uh, you know, it's not any different with the Canon system. That's why I acquired the 50 millimeter and the 85 millimeter, because I'm the sort of guy that kind of kind of likes having that option to really open the aperture up and, and not just for the kind of aesthetic that it gives with the out of focus areas, but also, you know, I shoot in a lot of situations where there's not a lot of ambient light. So it is nice having that option to kind of keep your ISO down. The 50 millimeter is probably definitely my favorite RF lens because uh, I do really enjoy the rendering of the lens. Um, and then the 85 millimeter is just, it's a tank. So, I mean, really really nice image quality um it's like right behind the 50 millimeter for me in terms of rendering and then the 15 to 35 for me is like really kind of my like hiking backpacking lens for for landscape and uh you know occasional portraiture and my video lens and then also in my bag i have a bunch of nd filters which are super important if you're getting into video and i would suggest definitely Make sure that you're buying high quality ND filters just so you don't have to worry about color cast or anything like that. I did also buy this UV filter to cover my 85 millimeter 1.2 lens just because it's such an expensive lens and the front element is, is huge. This is definitely a cheaper UV filter and I didn't find that it affected the image quality that much, but I did find that the autofocus slowed down a lot and wasn't as accurate. There was more hunting. So I've kind of been staying away from this a little bit more. And occasionally I bring out the Mavic Mini just to get some drone footage. This is the Series 1 and you can tell just because it comes with the uh, smaller remote controller. I actually like this more than the, uh, the updated version just because the remote controller is smaller. So it's a lot easier to kind of pack in my bag and take it more places. And then when I am shooting video with my Canon EOS R5, I always have it rigged up in a small rig cage and I have the Atomos Ninja 5 hooked up to it too. The gimbal that I'm using is the Ronin S and I thought about upgrading to the Ronin S2, the uh, newer updated version, but uh, realistically the Ronin S still gets the job done and uh, I'm really trying to work on making sure that I get, you know, full use out of my gear before I upgrade and not just upgrading because I want the latest and greatest. All right, so that's pretty much it for the gear I'm using. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll go over my lighting in a separate video on, um, you know, how I set up my YouTube videos and all of the equipment that I do use to record these videos. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely let me know and I will talk to you later. See ya.